So we'll look at part of the capacity house here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. And time now to go down to the sideline and visit with the third member of our broadcast team, Holly Rowe. And she's got more about the Auburn Tigers and how they got here today. Well, Ron, that's right. There is still a lack of hotel space here in Baton Rouge due to Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. And so Auburn has talked to a couple of other opponents who got here. We look forward to hearing from you throughout the evening. It uh, is the 40th meeting since 1901, and you see how close this series is. 2018 and one, the LSU Tigers hold the edge. 17 of 39 previous meetings decided by seven or less. But look at the last line, though. The winner has gone to, on to the SEC championship game in four of the last five seasons. Ron Tommy Tuberville talked about getting off to a fast start. This stadium is as loud as any in the country, maybe the loudest, but it is really loud early in the football game. Chris Jackson with the kick. Going to come down to the three-yard line, returnable, and it is Aroma Shadu. 10, 15 to the 20. Whoa, he is collared. He will not reach the 25-yard line, and it gives us an opportunity to talk about a young quarterback, and I'm anxious to see just how LSU defends him tonight. Brandon Cox, Bob. And Brandon Cox, Ron, started off the season four interceptions, five turnovers against Georgia Tech. The difference now, the play calling of Al Borges. They've become a run-first team, a lot of play action, but this kid has improved throughout the course of the season. So pretty good field position for the Auburn Tigers as they will scrimmage from their only 23-yard line. And it's Kenny Irons who will open up at tailback. Senior, 5'11", 202. The game clock is not operational. We will keep the game clock on the field. Steve Shaw, our referee tonight. So I hope that's the only thing malfunctioning tonight to start this ball game, as this crowd is revved and ready for a good showdown. And a little bit of cool weather, a little less humidity, Ron, than the last time we were down here on Monday night when LSU played Tennessee. And this crowd is going to take advantage of this cool front that came in. A little, about 40 degrees <laughs> difference, I'll tell you about, Davy. Okay, so we're set to go. Time will be kept down on the field until they get. The stadium clock operational. Irons, they come with the blitz off the corner. Going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and probably a loss of one as we take a look at the starters for the Auburn Tigers. Here are the backs, wide receivers, and the tight end. It'll be Irons, Slaughter, Obamanu, uh, Devin Arumashadu are the wide receivers, and Cooper Wallace is the tight end. Up front with the offensive line, you got to keep an eye in the middle. Joe Cope out of Andalusia, Alabama. He is a great hustle kid, great desire. He is undersized, and we want to see exactly how he handles Kyle Williams tonight, number 95 for the LSU Tigers, who is a bit of a fire breather. Second and 11, short drop, quick throw over the middle, got it, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Arumashadu. Couldn't hold on to it, he put a lot of zip on that one and had him open. So it's going to be third down, and still they'll have about 11 yards for the first as we look at the Tigers of LSU defensively. Boy, those two tackles, Roten and Kyle Williams, who I just mentioned, very, very good and very active. The linebackers, it all uh, begins with Cameron Vaughn in the middle. Ellie Highsmith has been playing extremely well, was the SEC defensive player of the week during the preseason. And Jesse Daniels, keep an eye on him. They send him blitzing constantly. Number 31. Here's third down. They need the 33 and a half yard line. This play is being whistled dead. Boy, LSU didn't hear it, and he gets knocked down. And now some of the Auburn players taking exception. And Daniels, who I was just talking about, they were bringing. And look at Tuberville. He is all the way out on the field at the 20-yard line. 
And I think this LSU crowd was the first to notice, Ron, that Tommy Tuberville was out on that field. But I think an excellent no call right there by Steve Shaw. It was impossible to hear that whistle. Seventh season at Auburn as the head coach. And in defense of all the kids on the field, both offense and defense, uh, you can see that Brandon has pulled up. He realizes that the play is dead, but obviously 31 Jesse Daniels did not. And then when he saw the quarterback pull up and not go full 100 percent, then I think he realized but the lick had already been passed. And you see right away this LSU defense under Bo Pelini, first year coordinator. Ron, they will blitz you coming off the bus. Bo Pelini took a little bit of heat after the first football game at Arizona State in Tempe for playing a little bit vanilla, not blitzing enough. But since that time, I'm telling you, he blitzes them all. Safeties, corners, as we take a look at Les Miles there on the sidelines. His record four and one. And of course, the last time we were here, it was not a happy ending. Uh, leading that ball game 21 to nothing at halftime over Tennessee. And the Volunteers came back, uh, as you know, to win it. And so one conference loss for the LSU Tigers. And they know full well they cannot afford to lose another conference game this early because the West would just about be out of the question for them. Third down. Here comes pressure. Steps up. Drills the ball. It is complete. Boy, that is a great pass and catch as Anthony Mix on the receiving end. The big receiver, 6'5", 248, out of Bay Manette. That's 10 yards, and let's see where they're going to spot him down. Steve Shaw says first down. And I think you see how cool Brandon Cox is in that pocket. I mean, he stepped up, Ron, and delivered that football. Bo Pelini coming with the safety blitz, and that is a big third down conversion. But this young guy is fearless in the pocket. I'm talking about Brandon Cox. I don't see how Melvin Oliver missed the football. He had a hand up, and it must have just gone right past it, and I mean within inches. So it's first down, and that silences the crowd just a Again, little bit. The game clock is not operational. 13 minutes and 59 seconds. And it will be kept on the field. So actually, Steve Shaw having to play the part of almost like a radio announcer. He's not giving the score, but he's giving the time that we have left in the period so that people know. Kenny Irons again, the lone setback for the Auburn Tigers as they scrimmage from their own 34-yard line. They'll give it to Irons. Pops it for about five yards. It is being shoved back by Ali Highsmith, the sophomore out of Miami that we talked about during the lineups. And also Kyle Williams, the senior out of Ruston, one of the team captains. Bob? We look at these keys to success if you Auburn. Obviously control LSU's defensive tackles. That's tough to do because you can't change the cadence a lot. You mentioned the undersized center, Joe Cope. They're going to have to double. Second, run the ball and play action. That is their game. And don't fall behind because Brandon Cox is still a young quarterback against a blitzing defense. Well, that's true. Cope only 6 feet, 276. And in today's world, the centers are normally 6'5 or 6'6 six, six and 300. Uh, he gives away a lot, but he has great heart. Here comes the pitch. Irons tries to turn the corner, breaks a tackle, good second effort. It's going to be third down at about two. Allie Highsmith with still another tackle and also helped out by Glenn Dorsey. And I think right off the bat, the thing that jumped out about to me about Kenny Irons, Ron, he runs hard. He is physical. He's a great zone blocking runner because he doesn't prematurely cut the ball back. He'll hit it north and south, and that time he ran over the DB from LSU. 508 yards for him on 90 carries, an average of uh, 5.6. You can see what they need. The yellow line shows the 44. Short drop, quick pass right over the middle. Got that one complete, and that's Anthony Mix. And he's off and running 40, 35, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds at around the 33. It is a gain of 26 yards. Chevis Jackson finally got him. And that time, Chevis Jackson playing outside technique and man to man. We look right there. He let big Anthony Mix inside, and he didn't have help inside. Ron, that's just too easy of a throw and catch on that inside route. You need to funnel that receiver outside if you don't have an extra DB helping you inside. And you can see what Anthony Mix did at the end of the run. He's always looking for somebody to hit. He waited and hit Xenon on that play. 
bunt set to the right, but they bring it back on a reverse to the near side. That's Ben Obamano. And they say he stepped out of bounds at around the 24. Holly Rowe, let's check on the sideline with you. Well, guys, a lot of teams in preparing to play for a loud stadium like this will pipe in music or crowd noise to practice. Well, Tommy Tupperville doesn't like to do that. He says it gives him a headache. So what they do is the whisper drill. They whisper the plays they do through several periods of practice completely silent. Guys, you're seeing it work so far. They're already doing several checks at the line on this drive, and they do not seem to be disrupted by all this noise. No, in fact, the young quarterback, Brandon Cox, seems to be, just as I say that Holly comes out from under center and calls a timeout, but that's better than being confused at the line of scrimmage and going ahead and trying to run the play. So let's take a timeout. 13-26 left in his opening quarter. No score, and Auburn is driving. 12-15 left to play, opening quarter. There is a real golden girl on the sideline. As you can see, we have no score between number 16 and number 7. But the Auburn Tigers are driving. Do they love their football here in this state line? Uh, how many? I went down on the field to do uh, to do a couple of stand-ups for an essay that ran in the program before us. And I don't know how many kids I saw in the stands with little cheerleader outfits on and major red outfits and everything. They start them very young, as you observe. And a great start for Auburn because this crowd starts really strong. They are really loud early in the game, and then they'll go into a little lull, but a great job by Auburn so far. Second down and short from the 24. And Irons close to the first down. No, he's still going to be a yard away. Roten with his first tackle of the night. Senior out of Bastrop by way of Mississippi Delta Community College. Ron, by the sixth football game, you now know what your identity is. We look at the Auburn offense. They started out the season. They really wanted to throw the football, take advantage of great wide receivers. But they are a run-first team and a play-action team behind that great offensive line. Good look at Brandon Cox. Quarterback Snake takes it straight ahead. And you can see with all the pushing and shoving off the tail of Joe Cope. And it appears as though he's going to have the first down. I've talked a lot about Joe tonight as you take another look at it here with the replay. And they didn't double Cal Williams. That time they tripled Cal Williams on that little quarterback wedge. But make no mistake, this is a talented Auburn offensive line. And the little guy in the middle, Joe Cope, former walk-on, looks out of place when you see him with that group. But he doesn't look out of place when you put that tape no, on. You know, and I mentioned it sounds like a, a cliché, but it's the truth. When you talk about a huge heart, he does have it. And uh, he makes up for what he lacks in physical size. Straight ahead with the running play. Whoa, what a hit at the line of scrimmage. It's Cameron Vaughn, 46. The senior out of Terrytown uh, is the first one to come up and make contact. And that's a good play for the defense also because it brings up a second down and long for the Auburn Tigers. Talk about respect. 20 of their last 21 games Auburn has won and 13 straight in the SEC and an unbelievable red zone offense right there. You look at first in the SEC. Carl Stewart checks in a teal back. They'll fake it to him. Got a man open. Cooper Wallace to tight end and he's going to be hit and knocked down by Roten. Boy, we could not find him quickly enough but Wallace broke open at about the 10 yard line or just inside of there and Roten messed up the whole thing. And you're going to get a look at it. You mentioned it right here. The tight end Cooper Wallace wide open right now. Brandon Cox, for some reason, didn't see him. And Claude Roden, you take that much time, Claude Roden's going to get in your face. Kenny Irons comes back in a tailback. It is third down. The line to make now is the 11 and a half yard line. That's Obamano in motion. Safety blitz. Hit. Knocked down. Ball is loose. No turnover. Daniel Francis. I believe Oliver is the man along Pittman that made the hit. And Leron Landry is going to. All out. Pittman actually did him a favor as he was spinning around. He knocked him so hard from behind that he. It caused an incomplete forward pass. Tonight's kick chart brought to you by Allstate. 41-yard attempt.
attempt from squarely in the middle of the field. John Vaughn. He missed it. Wide right. So these Tiger fans whoop it up for their defense. Again, Vaughn with the try, and it's barely wide, but barely doesn't count for very much. So let's talk about number four, Bob. Jamarcus Russell, the big sophomore, and I mean big, at 6'6", 259 pounds, and he hails from Mobile, Alabama. And as good as he looks in person, physically, he throws the ball that impressively as well. Joseph Adai, leading rusher in the SEC, is the tailback, but they swing it out to Skyler Green. And Skyler's very close to the first down. Actually is going to be stopped at around the 31-yard line. David Irons defensively. As you take a look at the starters for LSU, Adai, Stelz, Doucette, Dwayne Bowe, finally healthy. Youngster out of Miami, Florida, and he has really been creating havoc. Large target for the quarterback to throw to. And in the middle, how can you not take a look at Rudy Niswanger. The young man has never made a B in college. Straight A's has already graduated, working on graduate work right now. Auburn shows blitz. They stay at home. And a die cuts it back. Got an opening. 35, and I'll tell you, give credit to David Irons. If he doesn't make the tackle, it could have been a very, very large gainer. Maybe all the way to the end zone as we take a look at the starters on defense for the Auburn Tigers. T.J. Jackson out of Opelika. He's the guy that's really the bell cow up there, and they depend on him greatly. Stanley McClover getting a start tonight because of Browder with an injury. The linebackers, Travis Williams in the middle. Signal caller, he's the one that gets them lined up properly. And it is Will Height, Brock, Herring, and Irons in the secondary. This time for the 37. Blitz coming up the middle. Got the pass away, and he underthrew it. And it's a good thing because it would have been no gain on the plate to David Jones, the tight end. And in fact, I think he was just trying to throw it away. And the storyline for this LSU offense, it is an explosive, well-coached offense. But turnovers, right? They're worst in the SEC in turnovers, and it's mostly fumbles. They've lost 11 of 14 fumbles, and that is the number one priority, and it has been for the last couple weeks for Les Miles and his coaching staff. As we see, penalties and also turnovers has been the bugaboo, but particularly fumbles. I start to say the reverse. Jimbo Fisher said, you know, normally it's people throwing interceptions, but we've had fumbles. And they don't want to talk too much about it because you don't want to plant something negative in the minds of the bats. Short drop. Russell's going to run. 40, 43, and that's no pleasure. If you're a defensive back to come up and hit a 260-pound quarterback, and Terrius Williams finally put him to the turf. And the keys as far as LSU is concerned, Bob? Well, first of all, obviously eliminate fumbles and penalties. Wear Auburn down. This is an extremely quick Auburn defense, but they're not very big. And beat bump and run coverage. That means tight man-to-man -man coverage on the outside because Auburn will get up and challenge you with their corners. Benny Brazil checks into the ball game. He's the Olympian. Can really run. But a huge touchdown against Florida. Third down. They need to take it to the 47-yard line. Throws near sideline. Scott Green, too tall. Will Herring had the cover. And he was a step behind, but it didn't matter because the ball was thrown way too tall. You see LSU trying to get the football to Skyler Green, an explosive wide receiver, punt return type athlete. Last year, last week he only had one opportunity against Florida, but that time the ball just overthrown by Jamarcus Russell. Well, this is 41 Chris Jackson standing by to kick it away to Trey Smith. The Trey has dropped off to the 15-yard line. Here's the boot. Spiral's not going to turn over. The run, the ball bounces away from him. Now is going to go dead at the 20-yard line. So it's 37 yards on the kick, and let's take a timeout. Auburn, nothing. LSU, nothing.
So welcome back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ron Franklin along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe. Uh, and in a game that is extremely important as far as the SEC West is concerned, LSU lost a conference game early on to Tennessee. And for Auburn, they are undefeated in conference play. 13 consecutive SEC wins. Their last loss, speaking of Auburn, November the 15th, 2003 at Georgia. This is Irons, tries to bounce it to the outside, and that is a difficult situation, and what a form tackle that is Jonathan Zenon, who was out there to make the hit. Hard to go east and west on them. So the Nittany Lions trying to uh, get right back on the winning trail and doing a good job of it, up by 25 points in that ball game over the fighting line. Here we have no score, and it appears as though we now have a clock up in the window. The reason we have not had that is because the the uh, stadium clock has not been operational. Steve Shaw, our referee, uh, made the announcement early on. And that's the reason that from time to time, if you look there and you don't see how much time is left in the period, that's the reason. Before the snap, offside, number 95 on the defense. He was in the neutral zone and made the center move. Five-yard penalty, second down. Well, that was a great explanation right there by Steve Shaw. We said in the keys to the game for the Auburn offense, control the defensive tackles. And that time, Brandon Cox with the cadence got Kyle Williams to jump off sides. And that's one problem those two defensive tackles from LSU have had jumping in that neutral zone. He us about that the other day, and he said, early on, I'm just revved up. But you know what Bo Pelini said? I don't care. I'd rather have a revved up Kyle Williams than a guy who's sitting on his heel. Running play. Absolutely nothing. Ali Highsmith is the first man there on irons. And you made the point, Ron, two plays ago about trying to run east and west. On that particular play, they went downhill. But in this leg, the SEC, this is the best defensive leg. It's not even close with anyone else in the country. There are six defenses in the top 20 in NCAA stats. There's only one offense, and that's Georgia. They're 18th, and they'll be out of the top 20 after today. But just too much speed in this leg. Smith did not sign initially with Auburn. Wound up here as you see the punch set to the top of your screen. Pass is away and it's incomplete. And one of the things about Highsmith is E.J. Qualley was the man who was scheduled to be the starter at that linebacking position. Injured an ankle in the preseason. And boy, to have a backup step up and play the way he has, Bob, that's really a, a super bonus for the Tiger defensive staff. And for Miami Hurricane fans, that's a familiar name, Highsmith. His cousin Alonzo Highsmith played at Miami. Ali originally signed with Miami out of high school. Cody Bliss stands back to punt. Scott Green is the deep return man. Let's see if Auburn will kick to him. See, they're letting that clock run all the way down on the play clock. Line drive, very returnable. Here's Green, right at the middle. 40, 45, 50, hang on. 40, 30, one man to beat. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Scott Green. No flags. 37 on the punt, 65 on the return. And Bobby was so smart, he took it straight up the, 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 the shortest direction to that end zone once he made his first cut. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. Seven to nothing. The LSU Tigers jump on top. And here's one more look. Skyler Green, 67 big yards. Fans have been wanting him to get the ball. Well, he got it tonight. So we are back, and you're looking at Scott Green walking on the far sideline. First punt return for a touchdown this season. 
his fourth of his career. And all week long in the talk shows, that's all they've said here in Baton Rouge. Why is he not touching the ball 12, 14 times a game? But he's touched it twice tonight, and he's done damage both times. But it isn't, isn't it amazing how we always talk about keys to the game. We talk about the young quarterbacks. Can you run the ball? Will you blitz on defense? Nobody talked much about a punt return being a significant play early in this football game. Good point. Chris Jackson with a kick. This one's going to go nine yards deep. Over the head of a woman should do, and they will take it over at the 20. Bob, take us through the touchdown return. And this won't show up on the stat sheet, but I want you to watch Ronnie Prude right here, who is a corner, and how long he stays on this block. Watch him. That is a great job, and now Skyler Green, north and south. The punter's not going to win that one as he collapses in the open field, but a great effort, Ron, by a defensive back, Ronnie Prude, of really turning into a wide receiver and stop blocking right there. Also a good block by Ernie Doucette on the play. A lot of folks contributed on that one. Play action. Defensive end did not stay at home. That ball is thrown complete, and that's a rumor should do up at the 34-yard line. 14 yards, it'll be good for the first down for Auburn. I think you see the arm strength of Brandon Cox. Brandon Cox in fall camp had some tendonitis, had some shoulder problems, but I'll tell you, he has a strong arm. This guy came in at 170 pounds. They tell us, Ron, he's up to 205. I kind of like to put him on a scale. I'm not sure he's 205, <laughs> but he's come a long way since that 170 pound freshman. Well, he's very poised tonight in the beginning of this one in a very hostile atmosphere. Down 7 to nothing. Irons, two tough yards to the 36-yard line. That's Brandon Washington on the bottom of the stack and repeating the game clock is not operational here at Tiger Stadium. So that's the reason you don't see it in the window. And as we continue to look up there, it's not showing us a good number as well. So I'm going to guess. Well, I'm not going to guess. We'll uh, find out from Steve Shaw here in just a moment. You see, it shows 31.7 seconds, and I know that's not right. Second down. Need to go out to the 44. Here comes a blitz right at the middle from Landry, and he gets wrapped. LaRon Landry coming on the blitz. Before the snap, false start, number 73 on the offense, five yard penalty, second down. Ron, I want to go back to my point about this being a defensive league, the Southeastern Conference. The reason there is so much speed that you can play man-to-man -man coverage, you have great blitzers, and if that isn't enough, you have crowd noise in all these stadiums, which yeah. makes it tough on offensive football teams. Well, that's twice that Brandon has been hit on a no-play. Anthony Mix in motion, number nine. He's the lead blocker as they pitch it back. Irons turns the corner, 35 40, 45, and that's good for the first down. And out there blocking big number nine, Anthony Mix, good for 15 yards. LaRon Landry from his free safety spot on the tackle. And there's our guy, on Tim Duckworth. I want you to watch the big offensive guard right here, 325 pounds. He's going to pull around right here. He played an outstanding game against Arkansas. And look at big fella right there in the open field. This is a talented Auburn offensive line. You see why they are a run-first football team. Duckworth from Tatersville, which is where last year's quarterback Campbell is from. Here comes pressure. Stepping up, going to run it. And very wisely slides down. They'll say he's down at the 50-yard line. So it's going to be second and five. Cameron Vaughn was the closest man to him. Let's go down to the sidelines. Check it again with Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, Auburn quarterback Brandon Cox got off to a rough start. His first start ever in college football. He had five turnovers against Georgia Tech. He really could have gone in the tank, but Al Gorgeous, the offensive coordinator, said they have been thrilled with just how tough he is. In fact, his teammates have really rallied around him because he stands in the pocket. He takes these tough licks, as we've seen him take tonight. And he gets back up unflappable, unrattled. It's really earning the respect of his team. Yeah, he has, and, and, and that's good, rightfully so. Boy, Irons, 
belted at the line of scrimmage Kenneth Hollis this time as those defensive tackles Bob and you might talk a little more about this do such a good job of protecting those linebackers and keeping the interior linemen off of them. And the other thing, those defensive tackles, if you're Auburn looking at it, Auburn loves to pull their offensive guards to the side the play's going. Well, if you pull your offensive guard, that leaves your center one-on-one -on, -one on a defensive tackle. Yeah. I don't think you can block it that way all night. You need to double those defensive tackles to the side of the play. Third down. They need four to keep the drive going. Seven to nothing, LSU. Pass in and out of the hands of Aroma Shadu, the intended receiver. And it was Ronnie Prude who was all over him. And Ronnie Prude has had a great season at corner for LSU. Keep in mind, LSU lost both corners to the NFL draft off of last year's team. This guy keeps gaining confidence every week. Bob, I'm just told about two minutes left to play in this opening quarter. Now, Cody Bliss back to punt, and let's see what his instructions have been. Because Scotter Green just took one to distance, 67 for a touch. My instructions kick it in a row, double E. <laughs> He's running, low liner, bounding, and listen to the crowd, they're booing. <laughs> tonight or for the for years to come for that matter as long as he's here good ball game Boston College off to a very good start this year that is a difficult place to play in Blacksburg on first down Jamarcus Russell back to throw in and out of the hands of Bo just a little bit low on that one as he tried to curl under it and caress it couldn't get there Look at Jamarcus Russell out of Mobile, Alabama, home of Mike Godfrey. The sky is the limit for this quarterback. Jim, Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, Ron said he does the best job at the line of scrimmage, checking plays, getting them into the right protections than any quarterback he's had here at LSU. Maturity also was something that Jimbo talked about yesterday. He likes what's happening there. Not good numbers to begin. One of four for six yards. As Joseph Adai gets the carry, that's a short one, a gain of about three, and they're going to have third down and long. They need to take it out to the 28. That's uh, Didi on the stop, the junior out of Woodridge, Virginia. And we talk about Jimbo Fisher, LSU's offensive coordinator, a holdover from Nick Saban's staff. And right now, Jimbo will tell you, they have a bit of an epidemic with penalties and turnovers. 11 penalties, five turnovers against Florida. The week before, 14 penalties and four turnovers. But this is a well-coached football team. They will get through that cycle. You can see him clapping his hands there like somebody missed a block or, or something went askew. He thought it could have been better than what it was. Jamarcus Russell floats it out. A dive. Boy, that is a great open field tackle by David Irons. Did he close in a hurry? And a one-on-one -on -one tackle, which is difficult to do on a dive. And you always talk about corners. Can they play man-to-man -man coverage? But just as important, in my opinion, can they tackle in the open field? If we could freeze it right there, look at the grass. And David Irons, an excellent job, Ron, in the open field. That's one of the toughest arts in all of football is tackling in the open field. That was a great job. Chris Jackson, his first kick, you could see 37 yards. Trey Smith is the deep man. 7 to nothing. LSU leads it. Stadium clock not working, but I have to think that we're now under one minute to play and a dandy kick. High spiral, got a turnover. Smith all the way back to the 20-yard line. Gets a block. 25-30, and finally knocked out of bounds at around the 34. So it's 53 on the kick and 13 on the return. Take a look at this LSU defense, which has played outstanding the last several weeks. They held Florida to 206 yards. They are an attacking defense. If you put two backs in that backfield, expect strong safety blitz, free safety blitz, corner fire. The last two weeks, this defensive football team has been outstanding. 19 sacks in five games run. Number one in the Southeastern Conference in third down defense. So that is the end of the first quarter. Let's take a timeout. LSU 7, Auburn nothing. Back with more from Tiger Stadium. So welcome back. Great look at this uh, jam-packed stadium tonight. Uh, finally, a Saturday night game in uh, Tiger Stadium. And some of the headwear that is being donned here tonight by some of the Tiger faithful.
You know, Bob, we were joking off the top, and actually we weren't joking. We were down here before that game against Tennessee. It was miserably hot. Temperature's supposed to go down to the low 50s tonight, if you can believe it, here in Baton Rouge. And these kids are really bouncing around. They're enjoying it. First down. Short drop. Puts up the fade route, and he came down with it. A rumor should do. Threw it up there, but he run under it. And he did just that all the way to the 35 for 29 yards. Just a takeoff route, three step drop, so the pressure can't get to it. Put a lot of air under that football as he beats Chevis Jackson, number 21. That is a pretty picture right there. Well thrown football by Brandon Cox. I'll tell you what, Bob, Aruma Shadu and, and Obamano have really stepped forward in leading this uh, pass receiving core. Brandon Cox with an option. And we're now being told that the stadium clock is operable and is correct. Left side, this time again, Kenny Irons being hit by Cameron Vaughn. And let's take a look at game track, and this is what has transpired so far. Skyler Green, a absolutely beautiful 65-yard punt return for a touchdown. And then the defense of LSU. Menacing, yes. They have really set a pace here. That's Xenon with an absolutely picture-perfect tackle on the running back, Kenny Irons, there. So it's second down, Auburn with another threat. They take it to the 29-yard line. They need the 25 for the first down. Linebackers coming out of blitz. Irons turns the corner, and he is belted out of bounds at the 15-yard line, but it's going to be first down Auburn. Grubbs with an outstanding block on the play, number 69. The junior out of Elect Electria, Alabama. But the run is good for 14. And Ben Grubbs, they pull that front side guard on outside runs. He gets an excellent block on Chevis Jackson. And once again, credit to the center, Joe Cope, because when you pull those guards on play side runs, the center has to cut off that defensive tackle. Well, you can see Daniels with the hit on the far sideline. First down, Auburn, though. That's what's important to that group of Tigers. Irons right up the middle, running hard. Three, maybe four yards. They trail by seven. They're trying to tie it up. Melvin Oliver on the stop. Ron, I've had the chance to coach in this stadium a number of times. You've been down here a number of times. This crowd, as we look at them, they have some characteristics. They are extremely loud early in this football game. And then they kind of hit a low here during the second quarter. Maybe it's because they work so hard in those tailgate functions they have before the game and that, they're a little tired. That, I don't know what it is, but if you can survive the early part of the first quarter, you know, this is pretty quiet right now. Auburn's able to do a lot of things at the line of scrimmage right now. So they've kind of survived the initial burst of this crowd. The injured players, Chase Pittman, a junior out of Evangel High School in Shreveport, started off at the University of Texas and uh, transferred to LSU. An important guy in this defense, particularly last week against Florida, Bo Pelini goes to a three-man front. They actually stood Chase Pittman up in a two-point stance. He played like a linebacker in the 30 scheme. Good to see him walk off the field. Jack Marucci there to his left, the uh, head trainer here for the LSU Tigers. And as you can see, walking a bit gingerly, but uh, I, you would think that we would see him back on the field to play. Carl Dunbar, who was the defensive line coach, was the young man standing out there applauding. Former player here for the LSU Tigers. Pete Jenkins recruited him. Pete, of course, now retired. They fake the run. Here comes pressure. Dumps it off to Wallace. The tight end going to be necktied and pushed out of bounds at around the 10 and a half yard line by Ryan Willis, who just came in replacing Chase Pittman. Excellent job by Auburn of not allowing that safety blitz to discombobulate that play. Impressive performance right here by Brandon Cox because, Ron, this is really his first huge catch against a great defense since the Georgia Tech game in the opener. Brandon, the sophomore out of Trustville, Alabama. This time he has Carl Stewart behind him. 
third down and they need to take it to the five yard line. A short drop, fade route, got him in, and boy, he just overthrew Devin Aroma should do. He had beaten Jonathan Zenon in the left corner of the end zone. And Tommy Tuberville, it appears, unless he's going to gamble, we take one more look. Going to go for the field goal. Ooh. Close, but Aroma should do six catches last week against Arkansas. He has definitely become the go to receiver for Auburn. So John Vaughn trots on. This is going to be an attempt of 27 yards. He missed from 41. This one right on the left hash mark. And he got it. So let's take a timeout. 12 49 remaining until halftime on our new score 7 3 LSU. We are in the capital city of uh, the state of Louisiana, state capital. Uh, well lighted this evening. A beacon downtown. The situation right here, third down. The Auburn Tigers have still 17 yards to go if they want to keep the drive going. If they go incomplete here, it will be a 50 to 51 yard field goal attempt. Pressure. Going to try to run out of it in a sacking. Ryan Willis, the junior out of New Orleans, is the man who got there, and Roten is the man who flushed him out of the pocket. And Claude Roten just jumped off the football. You're going to watch him right here. The left defensive tackle beats Duckworth, just ran by him. And Auburn, just a minute ago, Ron, excellent field position, but the intentional grounding call, now the sack. And I'm a little bit surprised right now with field position being so precious that they would attempt this field goal, but they do have the wind at their back. This is a 54-yard attempt. And Bob's right after having a first down at the 27. He tried to get all he could muster on this one. It's going to be short. Not enough mustard. Short. Vaughn couldn't get it there. And a standing ovation coming from the student section for this defense of the LSU Tigers. They are loving it. I know Tommy Tuberville wants points after being able to move the football down the field, but this is such a field position game, Ron. LSU right now with an opportunity maybe to open it up a little bit, starting at the 37-yard line. Take a shot down the field. 9.46 left to play, third quarter. And now Justin Benson checks into the lineup at tailback, replacing Joseph Adai. And they give it to him. And the former MVP of the national championship game in New Orleans will have maybe a couple on the play. T.J. Jackson, who's been all over tonight, is there defensively for the Auburn Tigers. And Justin Vincent, one carry against Florida run, fumbled the football, his first opportunity tonight. You know the number one thing on this young man's mind is protecting the football, which kind of impedes your ability to make plays sometimes. So this young guy who has a lot of talent needs to bounce back and put that turnover behind him. Play action, got the tight end wide open. Incomplete, and the crowd didn't like the fact that Singer, after he got hit once, he got hit from behind. But no flag in the plate, no, no harm, no foul. And when you're a young quarterback with a gun for an arm like Jamarcus Russell, Ron, sometimes these little touch throws are the most difficult. And Big Singer got hung out a little bit right there. But right there, that should be an easy throw. But it takes time in the quarterback's development. He, he thought a little too much about that throw, I think. David Irons uh, was trying for the big hit rather than uh, concentrating on possibly intercepting. Russell throws the screen. It's a dive. Gets one block. Going to be sandwiched between two Auburn tacklers at the 40. Wayne Dickens is one of those men. You can see where the yellow line is. They are short. Excellent defensive series by Auburn. Keep in mind, Auburn coming in this football game, 13 straight SEC wins, but not a lot of respect. A lot of people grumbling about their schedule coming off the Georgia Tech game, but they are playing extremely well tonight. Bob, that's four times that they have had three and out in this ball game. So they kick it away as he waits for the snap, speaking of Chris Jackson, from his own 30-yard line. 
Trey Smith is the deep man and here's the kick. Spiral is not going to turn over. In fact it takes a huge Auburn bounce and they touch it dead. Zinger is the man who was there to get it. First down Auburn. They scrimmage from their own 26. Kenny Irons has really been a workhorse tonight. Great second effort. Breaks it out. 40, 45, 50. There was no whistle. He's gone. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown Auburn Tigers. 74 yards. How about second effort? We talked to Tommy Tuberville about Kenny Irons. He used the word hungry. This guy transferred from South Carolina. He waited a long time to play. Runs through the tackle of Cameron Vaughn. Then also Melvin Oliver. And I think hungry describes this young running back. That was a tremendous individual effort. <laughs> and keep in mind, he wasn't the starter last week. Brad Lester was. Duckworth with an outstanding block in the play. Extra point attempt by John Vaughn is up, and it is good. And this crowd is stunned, as is the LSU defense. 10-7, Auburn on top. Auburn has jumped on top, and folks, it's not in the shoes, it's in the jersey. Same numbers, Ronnie Brown, and watch this effort right here. Really pretty self-explanatory. Just a great individual effort. But keep in mind, Kenny Irons at the start of the season, only one carry against Georgia Tech. The next four games, he averaged 13 carries. But last week, Ron, he had 33 carries against Arkansas when Brad Lester left the football game. I think he's going to continue to get a bunch <laughs> more carries. And I think hungry really does describe well, the, big, like that. the big thing as you look at Skyler Green, Bob, is they needed a big play because they're not able to get it out of their receiver. And now they get it from all places. They get it out of a running back with the longest running play of the season. Well, speaking of with Auburn, second of all, Miami Dolphins, Ronnie Brown, 438 yards rushing this season. Cadillac Williams fifth overall Tampa Bay Buccaneers first player to start a career with three straight 100 yard games uh, Rogers ninth overall Washington Redskins 16 tackles in three games and Campbell 25th overall Washington Redskins that's what he was taken has not played so far this season but that's what they're playing without but as you can tell don't feel sorry for the Auburn Tigers there's still a lot of talent on the plains. So LSU now playing from behind, a dive. Holding on to one leg, Kevin Sears on the stop. Glad to see him back. He was shaken up late in the first half. You know, Ron, yesterday, Jimbo Fisher, I thought, said something really interesting. LSU's offensive coordinator about Jamarcus Russell. He said maybe the best thing, he just keeps on playing, doesn't get down. Kind of compared him to Brett Favre in that. You know in the end, this quarterback's going to have to make a play. Crowd a little bit restless right now, but he just keeps on playing. you got to love that about a young quarterback. Audible right here, second down. They need about six and a half to pick up the first down. And a big opening, five, ten. A die is loose, and he's out to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of 11. Will Harry saved a huge gain from LSU. And he made Steve Gandy, number 26, miss in the open field. Right here, watch this. That is a Whoa. great <laughs> move by Joseph Adai. And I think that run by 23 on the other team <laughs> may have inspired this number 10 on LSU's team. I don't think there's any question about that. He faked him so hard, though, he could have broken his shoelaces. First down from the 35-yard line. Quick snap, trying to catch Auburn on a wear. Chiron Carey in the ball game gets the uh, the tote and he'll have very short yardage Jackson and McClover combining on the stop in fact he's going to lose a yard not to like the way this Auburn defense is playing some people thought the stats were deceiving coming into this game as Auburn was number six in the nation total defense scoring number three keep in mind they led the nation in scoring defense last year people said they didn't play anyone yet this year but David Gibbs has to be proud right now of this effort by this defense Joseph Adai checks back in, replacing Chiron Carey. Auburn crowds the line of scrimmage. 
gives it to a die, bounces off a tackler, and then goes down hard at the 24 yard line. And a die is shaken up. An Auburn player tried to help him up. Will Herring is the man who made the hit, but as he was falling at a very bad angle, he took a shot up around the head. Take a look at it. How physical Joseph Adai is as you see him run through this tackle right here by DB. And right there, he took a pretty good shot. His, his helmet snapped back and then hit yeah. the ground, Ron. Headgear to the head. You see, Herring is going to have him coming down. Oh. And then the collision with Jonathan Wilhite. He took a lip from Jonathan Wilhite. And but he, we, we said yesterday, when you walk in the room with Joseph Adai, you can tell he is one tough, <laughs> tough. I'll tell you guy. what, we would. I would love if someone said make a wager on what his body fat is. I would wow. say it's below five percent. Oh, he is just cut. Chiron Carey checks back in. Chiron, a former quarterback, as is Skyler Green. There are a number of them on this LSU team. Russell, everybody covered. Now going to go long. Little ad lib. Got a man, and it is caught at the 21 by Craig Davis. 41 yards. And everybody in this stadium wanted Jamarcus Russell Ron to take off and run with that football. But watch right here, just great patience. Doesn't run with it and throws it going to his left, reminiscent of the play that he beat Arizona State on, the 39-yard touchdown. But what a great play as Craig Davis beats Will Height. But doesn't that remind you of the ASU oh, pass? Yeah. Going okay. to his left and showing the arm strength and the touch on that football. Chiron Carey continues to operate at tailback. First down LSU as they own it now inside the Auburn 20. Fullback in motion. They give it to Carey. Nothing on the right. He gets dragged down as he tried to cut it back. It's Wayne Dickens who grabbed a hold of him. Dickens has had a nice ball game tonight. He's been very active. We've called his name a lot. And Auburn not real big up front at defensive tackle, but, but Wayne Dickens is the playmaker on this defense for the Auburn Tigers. Well, here comes Skyler Green into the ball game with a second down and long. If they dial up the number five, you see him going out of your picture. He'll be at the top of your screen when we go back to the level shot at the line of scrimmage. There he is in the slot. Clock is under five minutes to play third quarter. Auburn 10. LSU seven and now not totally settled with what they saw and Jamarcus Russell will call a timeout. And you really see in this football game Ron it is going to take great individual efforts to make plays because nothing's going to come easy. Second down nine and a half play action Russell holds on to it got a man wide open touchdown Dwayne Bowe. you can do in a huge game like this you get a surprise touchdown scored and you come back immediately with an answer Colt David with the extra point attempt and he knocks this one right down the middle so 435 left in the third quarter we'll hold it right here and our new score is LSU 14 and the Auburn Tigers 10. Ron, what happens on this touchdown? The play action by LSU. I want you to watch Eric Brock, the safety right here. The corner, Patrick Lee thinks he's going to have help, but the play action causes Eric Brock to jump up. And now Patrick Lee is all by himself. So when you can run the football, play action causes that safety to bite. You see Eric Brock trying to retrace his steps. But the point you made of the great counter by the LSU offense to come back after the big run for Auburn. You know, your point is so well made about what happened with the safety biting on the fake. That was one of the worst passes that Jamarcus has thrown tonight. He had to wait and wait and wait because it was well underthrown. But it's seven plays, 80 yards. They're on the board in three minutes and 13 seconds. The good thing, Jamarcus didn't drill it 
because he's a legendary <laughs> around the LSU practice field for breaking receivers' fingers because he has so much velocity on the football. You know, we have seen him slip a couple of times. That's the first catch by Bo tonight. But they've been trying to get him more and more into the offense because he is such a huge weapon and can really do something with it after the catch. And he had an ankle early in the year, didn't play against ASU, but he is a big, tall wide receiver with long arms. Chris Jackson to kick it off. Devin Aroma should do number one, along with Trey Smith in a dual safety for the Auburn Tigers. And this one is going to bounce into the end zone. No penalty on this one. They'll scrub it from the 20. His banker? Yeah. First and 10 from the 20. Kenny Irons breaks a tackle. He's going to have 10, 12, and 13 yards on the carry. Boy, Irons now is totally inspired. It's one of those of give me the football until I can't run anymore. And you know what? That motivates your offensive line. Ben Grubbs is going to get an excellent block, number 69. And wow, I'll tell you, you have to love how Kenny Irons runs north and south. Not a lot of shape. No. But he will flat run downhill north and south now. Melvin Oliver with another tackle. Anthony Mix, by the way, number nine. You might have seen him with a very good block on the play. 146 yards on 19 carries. That's an average of almost eight per try. Play action. He's going to go on top. He's got single coverage to the top of your screen, and it's overthrown. <laughs> so congratulations to Arkansas State. Four and three. The run. Irons hit behind the line of scrimmage. Hit again and again. Look at the gang tackling by the LSU Tigers. But the first guy that was there, credit number 95, Kyle Williams. Boy, what an effort by this young man every time he plays. And we talked about the matchup that time. The right guard, Tim Duckworth, on the zone block or the scoop block did not cut him off. But that is a difficult guy to cut off from the backside because he is so explosive. Ron, this guy can drive a golf ball 300 yards. He's a scratch golfer. He doesn't look like a typical golfer now. I doubt 300 pounds. He, he probably can't turn on the ball. He just wills it that far. <laughs> Third down. They need to take it out to the 43. Pressure from the backside. Nicely picked up. The pass in and out of the hands of Anthony Mix. And boy, for the world. Now, he wants a flag, but it looked like the ball went through his hands. Ronnie Prude was there defensively. And Anthony Mix, a wide receiver in a tight end's body. Actually, a very well-thrown ball right here. We see Mix working against man-to-man -man coverage. Ooh. Had an opportunity to catch that football, no question. That ball got there quicker than he thought it was going to. And we mentioned it's going to take great individual efforts. Difficult catch, but I'm sure he's made that catch in practice. Skyler Green is the deep man. Cody Bliss kicking with the wind. And it's the old Australian rules side kick. I'll tell you, he got a great roll. It goes out of bounds at the 21-yard line, and it is 51 yards on the kick. Holly Rowe, what do you got for us? Well, guys, Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator for LSU, told us that one of the reasons he loves Demarcus Russell is his ability to make a strike anywhere on the field. He said he's got this unbelievable central core of gravity. And on that last scoring drive, you saw him use it two separate times, guys. He rolls back, and look, he's like leaping in the air. Shoulders aren't squared. This is not textbook, but he is right on target. He says that's what makes the great ones great. The other thing, he rarely ever misses an open receiver. Guys, this is just a sophomore, keep in mind. <laughs> Got a lot of growing to do. And he's going to throw to the safety valve a die, and Joseph will cover up the ball to make sure he holds on, and he's going to have the first down just across the 30-yard line. Will Harry there. That is a big man right there in the Jamarcus Russell. And notice the nice little touch he put on that football. 11 for 22, but you get the feeling right now he's got a little bounce in his step. He has some confidence. That last drive did a lot for this quarterback. And how often, and next time he does it, when he goes in the huddle, most quarterbacks don't power over their offensive line. He's taller than all of them. This time a die is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped at the 30. Just shy of it, actually, so it'll be a second down. Let's call it 11. Penetration by that Auburn defense, and that normally fouls up a little bit of everything as far as any offensive play. 
big quarterback looks like one of those offensive linemen in that huddle, doesn't it? Look at that. But his headgear is right up there with every one of those linemen. And they got some big fellows up front. Under two minutes to play, third quarter. LSU 14, Auburn 10. Short drop. Quick look in. Got it. If he breaks the tackle, he's headed home. Will not do that, but it's a first down by Craig Davis. And that's 19 yards in the play. Herring holding on for dear life. And I think Craig Davis's foot injury is better. He's going to get bump and run coverage right there. Good escape inside. Excellent tackle by Will Herring coming yeah. across as a free safety. But great quick escape move, beating the bump and run at the line of scrimmage. So the LSU Tigers move the chains. About to hit 90 seconds remaining, third quarter. See the numbers on Craig, 368 yards, an average of over 22. Russell's now hit five passes in a row. He goes straight ahead with a die. Going to be a gain of six. Flag is down. Travis Williams made the stop. They get a personal foul on Auburn at the end of that run. LSU's applauding. You're right. Coach Turberville has got to be saying, uh, guys, they're good enough. We don't need to assist them in any way. And adding 15 in this situation is really big. We we'll get a look at it at the end right here. Really difficult to see. Here's maybe a better angle. I think it was 48 on the tight end, not on the ball carrier. I think Marcus okay. Gunn on Keith Zinger, number 89. Here they go with the reverse. Here's Scott Green. It's set up beautifully. 30, 25, 15, and shoved out of bounds. They're going to say at the 14-yard line, Dini saved a touchdown. That was 17 yards. Even Jamarcus was out there blocking. And this is LSU's Reggie Bush. The coaches took some heat last week for only giving him one opportunity offensively to touch the ball, but they come with the wide receiver reverse right there. Did you see the big quarterback? Watch him here. Watch him get out here and block. Right there. Jimbo Fisher's going to look at that and say, hey, Jamarcus, we got some other people we kind of like that. I like the effort, but I think he can use those 250 pounds up around those numbers rather than going chopping at DB right. like that, or trying to chop at DB. First down from the 14. It's a dive back into the boundary. Hurdles a man. And a flag. In fact, two flags have gone down. And I think they got Hester just dead to right. <laughs> you saw it right. The fullback Hester tackling the defensive end on the perimeter out there. Boy, the penalty bug jump up and bite LSU again at the wrong time. It is incredible. <laughs> Shelby, the penalty stepped off. It goes back to the 24, which actually was the original line of scrimmage. They give it to a guy, dances in the middle, takes it down to the 19. Travis Williams will stop what turned into a five yard game. And the clock may run out on this play right here. We may be heading to the fourth quarter. LSU, no turnovers on the night, but the penalty thing, particularly right here in the red zone run, that penalty really hurt, the holding penalty. Well, they don't have to run a play, and the Tigers come walking over to their sideline, and the crowd is standing and putting four fingers in the air. We are headed to the fourth quarter with our score. The Tigers of LSU, 14, and the Tigers of Auburn, 10. To our situation. Second down and goal to Auburn. They trail by four, 14 to 10. They give it to Irons. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and it's Claude Roten. Anytime you get penetration, it really fouls up the offensive play, and it's exactly what happened. Big Claude got through there, and it's going to be a loss of about a half yard. And again, Ron, that time he does an inside move. The left offensive guard, Grubbs, thought he was going to stay outside and just undercut the guard. As you see, Tommy Doubleville saw the same thing. 
<laughs> so third down. How big is that missed field goal right now if you're an Auburn fan, Ron? Play action, looking for the end zone, throws it back and threw it short. And I'll tell you, in the top left of the end zone, that was Cooper Wallace, but I mean, Anthony Mix, did you see what I saw on Mix? He looked as though he was un unattended in the left corner of the end zone. Doesn't matter, incomplete. It brings up fourth down. I like the call right here. Tommy Tuberville going for the touchdown. Obviously, a field goal puts them within one. So here we go. Auburn LSU. Something unusual always happens. Would it occur right here? Fourth and goal at the five. Play action, retreats. Got a man. Caught for the touchdown. Anthony Mix. How about the call? Tommy Tuberville decided to go for it. And how about the execution? Getting the ball to the big wide receiver who's really a tight end. Timed his jump. How many times do you see that, Ron? Well, the, where the receiver times his jump and the undersized DB doesn't. So now all of these games are beginning to have nicknames there's four minutes and 52 seconds remaining will this one become the fourth down game john bond with the extra point attempt it is up and it is good so let's take a timeout auburn now on top 17 14 just under five minutes to play on that touchdown to anthony mix scoring drive 13 plays 87 yards four minutes and 35 seconds Cox with an outstanding series four of seven kickoff is going to come back to around the 25 yard line and now the LSU Tigers with 447 showing on the clock are 75 yards away tonight's BCS standings are brought to you by all states first thing that comes to my mind Ron not as a negative, but this Auburn football team last year undefeated in the SEC, not playing in the national championship game. But how about the Longhorns today? That's impressive what they did to Texas Tech. It really is. And you know the difficult thing for Mac Brown's club is maybe the last game that they really get a boost from. And that includes a conference championship game. Pass thrown short at the 37. Dwayne Bowe sliding down, trying to make the reception. Couldn't hold on. And it felt like Jamarcus that time on held on to that a little bit long. Maybe tried to guide that football just a little bit because he had Bowe wide open on that deep out route. 13 to 26, 144, one touchdown. Two tight ends in the ball game. Russell sets, blitzes on, pass is in and out of the hands of he caught it. Dwayne Bowe had the ball knocked out of his hands. It went straight up in the air. David Irons was out there defending on it, and look what I found for a second time. Watch this. Saturday night in Tiger Stadium. How about that? Off, off of Irons' back, off the left shin, the right shin. <laughs> and now you got to touch him. How about that play right there? That is off of Irons' back, left shin, right shin. Saturday night, Tiger Stadium, Ron. Okay. We're not going to just go. Also, away. Auburn and LSU, remember that? Third down and short. And they give it to Joseph Adai. He's going to have the first down. One timeout left for LSU. As the clock now is about to go under four minutes to play. Travis Williams there to make the defensive stop. David Gibbs pacing the sideline across the way. They're within four minutes of coming away with a huge win here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. But that is a world of time with the Tigers scrimmaging at their own 37 and a first down. Play action again. Here comes pressure. They pick it up. Drills the ball. Got him open. And Dwayne Bow inside the 35-yard line. Singer with a 
with a block that helped free his quarterback. That's good for 31 yards. Exactly right. And any time the quarterback breaks contain, you see Zinger right there with an excellent block. Almost impossible, impossible to hold your coverage that long. And Dwayne Bow wide open on the crossing route. Really should have stayed up run. He probably would have had some run after the catch, but looked that football in and made the short yeah, reception. He, he's had a couple of drops, and I, I agree with you. I think he wanted to make sure he caught it. You know, Bob, I don't care how good you are, though. It is virtually impossible to cover somebody for five to six seconds. Athletes are too good in this day and time. A dive bounces it back outside, and he'll take it to the 28. Will Harry, who's had a very good game on defense, is there to put the stop on. Two minutes and 58, 257 and counting. Boy, this has been some kind of defensive struggle. Auburn leads it by three, 17 to 14. The LSU Tigers trying to use up the clock, but also make sure that they get into the end zone. Here comes the play on second down. A guy again, left side. Boy, does he get belted, and that is Marquise Ginn. Gunn is the man who makes the tackle. That's one of the few times that we have called his name tonight. I don't want to jinx LSU, but no turnovers so far in this football game. Great job of correcting that problem. But right now, you do not want a field goal, excuse me, a turnover if you're LSU. 4 of 13 on third down conversions. They're going to take it to the 22-yard line. Here comes pressure. Signal for a fade route. He's there, and the ball is just overthrown. And for some reason, Bob, it almost looked like he pulled up a little bit. Well, one reason... I think, Ron, Will Herring, the free safety number 35, is coming off the top of the screen. And I agree. Bo, Dwayne Bo did pull up right there. And if you can see Herring coming across the top, he's open right now. But look at Herring. And he did short arm that ball. If, if he planes out, I think he's got a chance to catch the ball at the one yard line. I don't think there's any question, Ron, that he did short on that when the free safety Herring came into his vision. All right, here's the situation. Trying to tie this football game. Chris Jackson. And Auburn is going to call a timeout. So, <laughs> they uh, have used their final timeout. The LSU Tigers trying to go for a field goal here to tie up this ball game and send it into overtime with a minute and 46 seconds showing on the clock. And uh, you agree with the call for for Coach Tupperville to make sure they get their uh, the T's crossed and the I's dotted here? Well, no question, because if you're Auburn, you don't want to jump off sides, maybe get caught with 12 guys on the field, at least hold them to a field goal opportunity right now. Give yourself a chance offensive if you get the ball back with a minute and 46. But just some great individual efforts tonight in this football game. These are two excellent, excellent Southeast Conference Western Division teams. And this is just what we thought it would be, Ron. Well, here's a look at the Southeastern Conference West Division. Alabama 5-0. Auburn and LSU. The LSU Tigers already have one conference loss. Auburn trying to go four and zero, oh. and the Tigers of LSU trying to make them three and one in conference play. And LSU's only loss Monday night home against Tennessee, their home opener in overtime. But right now, for LSU, you just want to get it to an overtime situation. This, this is would, no gimmick. This would be his longest of the season. It's 44 yards from just inside that left hash mark. You see, he missed already on the 38-yard line. Remember, we had a high snap on LSU's last field goal attempt. Matt Flynn is the holder, the backup quarterback. Petty, the snapper, plenty of distance. And he's good. We're tied with 140 to play. A season long for Chris Jackson.
It feels a lot better when you make them, doesn't it, Chris? And how about the pressure on this young guy? The whole state of Louisiana right now watching this one. Not counting Alabama, but the young guy steps up and drills it through. How about the catch on that drive oh. by Dwayne Bow off the back of Kenny Irons, David Irons, off the left shin, the right shin. Bow uh, still a little bit of a mystery. Why he pulled up if he had planed out, I think he had a shot at catching the ball and giving him a first and goal at the one yard line. Holly Rowe, let's check in with you. Guys, an interesting turn of event there right before that field goal attempt. Les Miles went out onto the field and tried to call time. That's right. That's exactly right. LSU does have one. And the clock Thanks, was Holly. down to two seconds, and that's why Les Miles was wanting to call time out there because I took for granted that LSU did call because there was only two seconds left on that 25-second clock. Aroma Shadu and Trey Smith at a dual safety. You see John Vaughn on the other side. He's been loosening up in case they get it close enough. Aroma Shadu. Nothing up the middle. Takes it to the left. He'll be tackled shy of the 20-yard line. And Ron, they play, they pay Tommy Tuberville a lot of money, and they should, because he's done a tremendous job with 13 straight SEC games. But here's where you earn that money. A minute and 33 left. You have one timeout. You're going into the wind. How conservative are you right now? Well, Offensively, I would give it to Kenny Irons. I'm pretty conservative, but this guy could break one for him. John Vaughn, his longest, 43 yards. But consider this. Even if he had it from 43, he's got to kick into the wind from where they are right now. Pass underthrown at the 25. Intended for Cooper Wallace, the tight end. It'll stop the clock at 127. Keep in mind, Auburn going into the wind. Don't really want to punt this football from this field position, obviously. Particularly Skyler Green back there, and your field goal kicker's hot if you're LSU. Keep keep this in mind as well. You saw Minnesota Wisconsin last week, didn't you? You don't want to have to punt from deep in your own territory late. Cox got a man and he throws it complete to Anthony Mix, who will step out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Jackson was out there defensively, but that's a big one. Gain of 18 yards. And again, Anthony Mix using his body right there. Little swim move on Chevis Jackson. I'll tell you what, give Tommy Tuberville, Al Borges credit, and give that quarterback, Brandon Cox, credit. It shows you on the confidence they have in this improving young quarterback to go ahead and keep throwing the football. Now this game tonight's going to do a lot for him. I don't think there's any question about that. Three wide receiver set from the shotgun. Cox, great protection. Now it breaks down, and he just throws it away. But boy, he took quite a shot. That was Johnson who got in there. Number 47, and he belted him down hard. And the old term coverage sack really does apply because he had plenty of time. Just nobody open. You're going to see late in this route right here. Tremaine Johnson, number 47. A minute 40, 14 left. Tied at 17. It is second down and 10. Cox right over the middle. Got that one complete at the 45-yard line to Courtney Taylor. And Auburn lines up. They're in the two-minute drill. Auburn with one timeout. And they're using a lot of time right here. I think they should call timeout right here, Ron. They this, don't have one left. This third down, they they're had out of timeouts, use... correct. Yeah. They're out of timeout. Clock is going to under 45 seconds. Boy, this is taking forever. Under 35 seconds. They're going to go with a running play. And here's Irons. 
tries to cut it back down the sideline, 45-40, and he gets out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Laron Landry is the man who hammered him out. It's a gain of 18 yards. What a great cutback, and he's going to get a great block right there by number 86, Courtney Taylor. What an effort, though, again, as you look at 215 yards. On tonight. 26 carries, an average of 8.3. And he called it getting off the bus for us at ESPN. That is the most since Cadillac Williams in a ball game. 27 ticks left on the clock. Otherwise, we're going to overtime. Deep in the pocket this time. Slings it out, and whoa, he took a chance. He stared him down a little too much. And I'm telling you, coming after the ball pell-mell was Ronnie Prude for the interception. And that was, as you mentioned, very close. <laughs> whoa, I'm telling you. Down to five seconds, and he grounds the football. That will stop it with 6.8 seconds remaining. Tremendous drive by Auburn Ron just to get in position right here. So again, we tell you, 43 yards is his longest. And this one is going to be placed down at the 39, so it's a 49-yard attempt. It would eclipse his old mark by six yards. And you have to think LSU will call timeout. They didn't get it, and here's the kick. Ball is down. He's got the distance, and it is no good. Wide to the left. Unless Miles was actually trying to call timeout, was out on the field. He's the happiest guy in the stadium right now. They didn't see him. Right here we look. I mean, that's about as far out there as you can get wanting the timeout. They got 12 guys on the field if you count Les Miles. <laughs> wow. He didn't really signal. He was hollering timeout. Look at this prevent defense here. It's a 3-3-1-3. Three, three, three. <laughs> and the deep backs have dropped off all the way to the 25, the 20, and the 15. I'll tell you what, with the window, how far can Jamarcus? He may throw this one to Lafayette, Louisiana, if he, he gets time. He could throw this to the end zone. There's, there's no question about that. And here he goes. Very high. And it is tipped and incomplete. And we're going to overtime. We are tied at 17, and let's take a timeout. LSU 17, Auburn 17. We'll be back for overtime after these messages. So we are back, and we're headed to overtime. Auburn 17, LSU 17. Last time we were here, Ron. The Monday night home opener, <laughs> overtime against Tennessee. So they're going to consider us the, the overtime crew. As you look at Tommy Tuberville, LSU, uh, I guess not displeased with the situation. Both teams had an opportunity to get a victory. As you look at the overtime rules, coin toss uh, for choice of offense or defense or end of the field. And generally, the highest percentage of times the teams vote if they win the toss to go on defense first. Each team will get one possession on the opponent's 25 uh, per overtime until the winner has decided no game clock. There will be a play clock, and you must go for two. Choices are going to be whoever wins the toss can choose offense first, defense first, or the end of the field. Whichever choice that team makes, the other will exercise their choice. We start at the 25, both teams get a shot. Y'all been through this, so uh, let's get it going. You usually Gentlemen, choose defense if you win, right? Yeah. But you may choose end of the field because of the wind tails. right here in the stadium. He has called a tail. It is a tail. Auburn, you won the toss. All right, Auburn is going to go on defense. You're going to be on that end. All right, turn your backs over there like you're defending. Wait a minute. Auburn won the toss. 
Did LSU I'll choose the wrong we'll end of the field? Defense, and we'll be going this way. The reason LSU chose that end because that is the student section okay. of Tiger Stadium. So Les Miles made the decision that that student section and the support they're going to get was more important than that win. Obviously, that was his decision right there. That's exactly what he did. Uh, so you're going to ask the students to become like a 12th player and help them out. So the officials move it up. We go back and look at that last field goal. LSU, I think, dodged a bullet right there. Obviously trying to get the timeout. He's out on that football field as that ball's kicked. You can be penalized for being out on that football field. Probably a good no call. Obviously a good no call if you're <laughs> Les Miles. All right, so let's look at the situation. Uh, LSU goes in offense first. And, of course, not until the third overtime do you have to go for the two-point conversion. One of the rules that was amended a couple of years ago that they changed so that we would not have as many five and six overtime period games. So the first play of overtime goes with LSU. Jamarcus Russell, short drop out of the backfield, throws this one complete, and that is Keith Zinger, the tight end who will make the reception, and he's tackled at the 18-yard line by Will Height. Always interesting in overtime. Obviously, you have to have points. You have to have a score, but you do not want, obviously, to turn it over. You so you're always a little bit cautious. Good look at Irons, who has had just an unbelievable night over 200 yards for him rushing. Stelts, the fullback in motion, and they go straight ahead with Joseph Adai. He's going to have the first down. Wayne Dickens defensively. So there is no game clock, only a play clock during time uh, over the overtime period. Joseph Adai, Kenny Irons. You get the feeling that all of a sudden, instead of the quarterback front, it may be the tailbacks here in this overtime beside this thing. Well, uh, they've got max uh, protection here with two tight ends. Play action, going to throw it back, and the ball is dropped. Whoa. Dropped by Jones, the tight end. A little throwback delay to the tight end. Really kind of a dangerous play right here, Ron, as you see him throw that football back across the grain. David Jones came clear from the top of the field. Kind of a misdirection. Just try to take advantage of that pursuing Auburn defense, but that's a little bit dangerous. Did you see who was out there and uh, had just smelled it out? Was Wayne Dickens, big defensive tackle. He would have been all over the play. Second down and 10. This time, Russell will go from the shotgun. Looking for the end zone. Now he's going to run, and Jamarcus gets hit hard and is tackled at about the 13-yard line. And now they're going to face third down and long. Marquise Gunn, along with T.J. Jackson, combining on the stop. You think she realizes it's in overtime right now, huh? <laughs> No. The only thing she realizes is that gum in her mouth is really good. <laughs> And this is a fun Saturday night at Tiger Stadium. If you just joined us, LSU 17, Auburn 17. We're in overtime, and a timeout has been taken by LSU. And to remind you that Sports Center is coming up immediately following this overtime. When you look at this remaining LSU schedule, Ron, what a huge game as you look at North Texas next up. Uh, off the uh, cancellation game. I'm talking about this game for LSU tonight because you go North Texas, Appalachian State before you go on the road at Alabama and at Ole Miss. So how big is this game for LSU? Well, the, the largeness of it is the fact that a loss would be a second conference loss and that all but the way teams are playing. It's, it's really tough to go through this league undefeated, but two losses normally means that you're not going to wind up going to Atlanta uh, for the conference championship game. Here's the remaining schedule for Auburn. 
get Ole Miss. I think a good defensive football team, Ole Miss at home. Then they go to Kentucky, obviously at Georgia. The health of D.J. Shockley will be a key issue. But right now, if you're Auburn, you got one opponent. That's LSU. Yep, and this is a very large third down situation. LSU's got to take it to the three and a half yard line. Russell, good protection, looking, still looking, now rolls to his right. Throws it back, and it is in and out of the hands of Early Doucette. And there's a touchdown, and he drops it. That's two tonight for the LSU Tigers. And Ron, Early Doucette, if you watch him, he is open early as well. Right now, he is wide open for a long time, but early. Wow. And then Craig Davis is thinking, why was I so unselfish? I should have cut in front of him and caught the football. And think about early Doucette, the great catch he made against Arizona State out in Tempe to win it. How about, how about last week in the ball game against Florida where he had to turn his body completely? This field goal is going to come from 30 yards away. Chris Jackson trying to put the LSU Tigers up by three in the overtime period. Clock again winding down. Long enough, and he got it. So LSU goes on top three points, 20 to 17 in the overtime period. Ron Franklin, Bob Davey, Holly Rowe, coming to you from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, number 16 against number seven. The winner of this game for the last five seasons has made it to the SEC championship game in Atlanta. And of course, Auburn trying to hold on to a 13 game win streak. And they can win it here tonight with a touchdown on this series. You see why coaching is so tough, particularly if you're less miles right now. But how many great individual efforts LSU players did make to put them in position? But unfortunate for early Goosey. From the 25. Now here comes the crowd trying to help out. Pitchback comes to Irons. Blocker in front and tries to turn the corner. And they're not going to give him very much. He'll have a gain of two. LaRon Landry, who's been outstanding out of the secondary tonight, there to make the tackle. Kenny Irons. 218. Night, Ron. You're right. 27, 27 rushes, 8.1. The average one touchdown. First 200 yard plus game since 03. And that was Cadillac. Now the bench at LSU asking the crowd to stand up and make more noise. Play clock is down to two. Going to throw a fade route near sideline, and Courtney Taylor unable to get underneath it. Jonathan Zenon had the cover. Now we'll look at our Polaroid image of the ball game. The first an off the field Polaroid image. Ron, I kind of like Big Anthony Mix right here, number nine, the big wide receiver right here, came to life on the last Auburn series. Third down, retreats to throw, got it over the middle, and the ball is almost intercepted. Pass was intended for Mix. Ryan Willis was there to break it up, so now it's fourth down. And they did go to Mix. Excellent coverage by Ryan Willis, the linebacker, and also Ronnie Prude. And how about this young kicker, Ron? Well, How's his pulse right now? He's got an opportunity to send this into a second overtime. This attempt is going to be from the 34-yard, or the 24-yard line, meaning a 34-yard attempt. Near hash mark. Ball is down. Got plenty of distance. And oh. he hit the upright. He hit the upright. LSU Tigers have just won what will be classified as the upright game. Bob, let's take one more look at just how close this thing was. And if you're an Auburn fan, Ron, 
that 13 game SEC winning streak to have it broken off the upright is disheartening. And Bob, that's three field goals toward this end of the field with the wind crossing that either hit the upright or went wide left. It definitely had an effect on this football game. And the second happiest guy in this stadium behind Les Miles is Early Doucet, who dropped the touchdown on LSU's possession. Holly Rowe, let's check down on the field with you. Coach, these have always been improbable endings. What's it like to win the upright game? Hitting the upright. Well, we're, we finally made some kicks. You know, we certainly would like to have not dropped a couple of balls and not have to go to overtime. But to give Auburn a lot of credit, they played awfully hard. Our guys wouldn't be denied. Difficult game to win, and we win it. What went into your decision to play at this end in overtime seemed to be a key. There wasn't any question. You see it. You see it. They see that student section back there. That's where we were playing. Second half, your quarterback comes in and makes some incredible throws to get your momentum starting. What was his contribution? and rolls out, makes a couple of nice plays, and his hand was bothering him a little bit most of the night. Tell us a little bit about Joseph Adai. Again, your running game seemed to finally gain some ground. Joseph Adai is LSU through and through. He's going to play with heart and soul the whole time. That's that's him. All right, heart and soul wins it for you tonight. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. So the final score in overtime, it is LSU 20 and Auburn 17. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. And now for Bob Davey, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Franklin. Good night, everybody, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and what will be called the upright game. Overtime, LSU Tigers are victorious.